If you have ever fallen on your tailbone or your butt, ouch, I have, I know that that hurts a lot. This video is for you. I am gonna be showing you how to release the uh, ligaments and some of the tendon of the gluteus maximus, but the tendons and ligaments around your sacroiliac joint, your basically your tailbone, um, your coccyx, and we're just gonna kind of explore that whole area. But before I actually show you the technique, I have a few warnings, uh, friendly warnings here that I wanna make sure you know why to do this, how to do it safely and effectively, and how not to traumatize, or I should say re-traumatize that you know, injured tissue. So if you did fall on your tailbone at any point, and I know, you know some of you have fallen many times, multiple times. For example, if you were learning to snowboard perhaps, or if you ride horses and maybe when you were learning um, or as you progressed in skill, you got kicked off, you fell on your tailbone, I don't know. But there are reasons why some people might have fallen on their tailbone multiple times um, if you live somewhere icy. Uh, anyway, the more you fall in that area and the harder you fall, or if you fell onto a really hard surface, uh, there's probably gonna be some scar tissue here, some really dense tissue, and there's kind of a, a memory in the nervous system that lives in this area about the trauma there. And the tissue has actually been traumatized. And so I've seen a lot of people, and I've experienced this myself, go into this area too aggressively. They end up getting really sore, having pain in their sacrum or tailbone that they didn't have before. And sometimes you can end up getting glute spasms or low back spasms if you do this too aggressively. So please follow my instructions really carefully. There are a couple things I wanna, you know, maybe just tell you right off the bat here uh, to pay attention to. Number one, you're gonna need a tennis ball. And please, please, for the love of your body, don't use a lacrosse ball. Um, I can't stress this, this enough. The lacrosse ball is gonna be way too hard. Um, you know, and a golf ball, please don't do that. Uh, so you want something like a tennis ball because a tennis ball has a lot of give. It's um, really forgiving, it's gentle. You can kind of sink into it, but it's still hard enough that you're gonna get the release. But if you go in there with a really hard object that's meeting really hard, dense tissue, um, and especially if you do that and you're not careful about being really gentle, Chances are you're gonna kind of re-traumatize this tissue, end up really sore and tender there tomorrow, maybe wake up some pain receptors. We have the most pain receptors in the entire body, the densest, richest area of nociceptors in the low back fascia specifically, in that whole low back area. So you just wanna be really careful here. So use a tennis ball. And then I'm gonna be showing you how to do this where you actually lift up onto your arms. So you will have to have a bit of arm strength or wrist strength to hold yourself up here. Um, if you sit fully on the ball with your whole weight there, what you're doing is kind of smashing that tailbone tissue uh, coming into the, the ball with a lot of your body weight, maybe your full body weight, and your nervous system and the tissue in your tailbone may react to this like another impact trauma, right? Because what happened last time is you literally fell and what we're doing in this with this technique is sitting on a ball. And so if you're not careful, your body could actually react as if you are falling again, and it could go into some kind of protection, contraction. Um, it, you know, your nervous system could react to this as a major danger to your pelvis and your spine. So um, you wanna lift off um, when I tell you to, and make sure to kind of stay there the whole time that with that lift off. Um, so if you need to take breaks when you're doing this, please take breaks, but make sure to stay lifted the whole time, not putting your full weight on there. Um, and then the other word of caution here before we begin is just to listen to your body. Um, so if you start getting spasms or it feels nervy to you or you get kind of this feeling like this doesn't feel right, I don't know if it's safe or not for me to be here, then just don't do it. Um, you know, some of you may need to work with a professional 
Um, but I do want to, you know, just give you a word of caution there too. Um, I have seen people for uh, my issues related to falling on my tailbone or just had people working on my body. Maybe I didn't even tell them about it and they discover how tight my glutes are, um, supposedly, even though I, I have no pain there, it's not anything I was aware of and they start digging in and I end up with spasms the next day or later that day. And this has happened to me, this has happened to my clients. So I just want to um, make sure this doesn't happen to you. Uh, so if you do work with somebody, make sure you work with someone who can listen to your nervous system, who can listen to your body. Um, it shouldn't be really aggressive. It can feel really intense, but it doesn't take a lot of weight with this to, for it to feel intense. So I know this is a lot of like disclaimer before actually showing you the technique. And some of you have already skipped ahead, um, you naughty people. Um, but this just feels so important to me because of all the areas of the body that I have have worked with, um, you know, people think their glutes are tight. And so they go in there and they dig in there and they get really aggressive with it and they get some temporary relief. But of all the areas in the body, this is the area that reacts the strongest when it doesn't want you to be in there. So I don't want you to end up with worse pain tomorrow. So hence my big disclaimer here. Um, so grab your tennis ball and follow along if you're ready. Okay, so where we're gonna go, I'm gonna show you on my butt. Um, is uh, we're gonna explore a little bit of the fascia up here um, at the top of the butt, basically, right where it meets the low back. And then we're gonna follow it down one side at that kind of glute max, gluteus maximus attachment area. And then you can do the other side. Um, and then what we're really trying to feel into are the ligaments under that glute max. So basically, all the areas up for grabs are actually you're you're following your butt crack basically all the way down here um, up to here a little bit of that kind of low back sacrum fascia up here and we're not going after the gluteus medius which is the pocket of your glute on the side of the hip so let's do this okay so you're gonna start just like me legs out in front grab your tennis ball find one side of that gluteus maximus kind of muscle tendon stuff. So it's right next to your butt crack here. And then you're gonna come up onto both feet and onto your hands. So this is the lifting up that I'm talking about and you really wanna stay here the whole time. So if you need a break, if your wrists or elbows need a break, take a break. Um, and then I'm giving you some options here for movement. You're gonna need to play around with your body to figure out what you need to do, but you've got really slow, just kind of side to side or back and forth. So feet to head or side to side. You've got straightening one leg out and then going side to side or front to back. You've got maybe just resting on a spot and breathing if it's super intense. Um, now I'm rolling up into kind of the low back uh, tendon fascia area. There's a lot there. And if this is the first time you're doing this, the whole point is to just get to know this area and what's here. Uh, so this back and forth movement is gonna be one of the things that you're gonna do with the leg. And then the other is really the hip. So, then if you need to take a break, shake out your hands to take a break. Um, and then you want to find as many spots as you can. So where I just started was kind of up towards the top of the butt crack on one side and a little bit, we got a little bit of that low back fascia. But now I wanna show you what you can do going further down. So this is gonna feel probably a little weird. Um, and we're going right into that coccyx sit bone area where those ligaments are and then just really slowly moving yourself around the ball to find the spots. So let's say you find a really good spot. Great. You can do little tiny back and forth here. So this is kind of a diagonal back and forth. Instead of doing this, I'm going like forward and back a little bit at the same time. And ooh, like that's a good spot on me. And you might actually get some twanging here. You might actually get to where 
I don't know, you're stroming over a ligament um, and that's okay. Uh, so the first time you do this, chances are it's just gonna feel really tender, really dense. Um, you might not have a lot of differentiation of t tissue texture here, um, but of course you wanna explore both sides. But most of the time when we fall, we tend to fall kind of at an angle. It's kind of rare that we fall perfectly on both sides of the tailbone, right? So chances are, whatever side you fell on is gonna have the densest tissue. Now the other side might be tight or dense from compensation, but you definitely want to explore both. Um, and what I wanna stress here is just that you are going from that kind of low back tailbone area down to like that sits bone, but you'll reach a point where it, you just feel like you're on your hamstrings almost and you sink like my I'm sinking all the way to the floor, so like that's too low, right? Um, so you wanna stay, uh, you know, within that sacral ligament area of your body. And that's really, this is really it to be honest, um, but uh, you can use these movements and this technique to explore the whole area. And so, um, you know, I've, I've used this before and spent 15 minutes um, on this whole area. Now I wanna show you something if for some reason you're just totally unable to lift yourself up and stay lifted. Because remember, it's really important to stay lifted um, so that you're not smashing the tissue. But if for some reason that's just really not doable for you, um, you can do something else, which is to kind of lay down. So I'm gonna show you that in case you can't stay lifted. So you're just gonna come down onto the ground and you're gonna use your feet instead. So you're gonna have to lift your butt off the ground uh, and then place the ball where you want it. Uh, and then you need to stay lifted. So this is gonna require, you know, a little ankle uh, stability and strength and being able to stay lifted, a little bit of abs here, right? So it's just different. Um, but the reason I don't recommend this position, if you can help it, is because there's only so far we can go and then boing, the ball's just gonna like pop out. So you're gonna miss that coccyx area and the really low um, part of the, the gluteus maximus. But if you have to start here, that's fine because you can actually get a good bit. So if you wanna start up high, kind of on that uh, glute max, sacroiliac um, ligament, fascial area, same thing. So you're just gonna go kind of back and forth. You could go up and down, but it's a little clunky. So the back and forth here is probably gonna be your best bet. Um, you could still experiment with leg movement. So maybe you actually straighten your leg out. Um, that is actually gonna load the fascia here and make it more intense. So that's gonna allow you to get a little bit more than you would if you stayed with that, the side you're on with that leg lifted. Um, but even here, I can kind of feel that I'm not being super effective. Uh, and so sitting is just a lot more effective for this. But again, if you have to start here, you can, you have it as an option. So that's pretty much it. I want you to make this your own. Uh, so just explore this part of your body, listen to your body. And then really quick, I wanna give you some no-nos, some don't do's because you're gonna do yourself a disfavor if you do these and they're super common. I see a lot of people doing them. I even see people teaching glute releases and glute rolling um, like this. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to get the most out of this without it backfiring. So those no-nos would be getting on this ball and just going like really fast back and forth and scrubbing it out and getting into that glute medius because you know, yeah, it hurts in there. And so you must need to do it, right? <clears throat> no, stay out of your gluteus medius, I promise. Even though it might feel tight, chances are it's neurologically contracted to keep your pelvis stable. And something else is actually the cause of that pelvic instability. It's extremely rare for the gluteus medius to actually be fascially restricted, right? And if you, you know, are here watching my channel, then chances are you're interested in releasing fascia that is dense and restricted or adhesed, right? And you really don't need to do that with the gluteus medius. 
It can backfire. I've seen it happen. It's happened to me. I don't want it to happen to you. All right, so that's how you get into your tailbone, sacro, iliac fascia there. Um, some of that glute max attachment stuff too. Uh, so here at the end, I just wanna talk to you about how to use this ongoingly. Um, you're gonna wanna do this area of your body a little differently than most of the other areas of the body I talk about. So if you've been with me a while, you will know that I usually say to stay on one spot 30 to 40 seconds, and maybe you know, you're gonna do three to four spots per muscle group. This area is different. Um, I have actually stayed on my tailbone for 15 minutes before, just going really slowly, really gently, all over the whole area. So the very first time you do this, which I'm assuming if this is the first time you're watching this video, um, this will be the first time, the whole purpose is to get kind of a lay of the land here. So you want to, uh, you know, just get familiar with what it feels like, get familiar with the texture of the fascia here, get familiar with the really tender or sore areas, get familiar with the dense areas. Maybe there are even some numb areas of scar tissue where you don't feel a whole lot at all. Um, all of that's gonna be really good to just become aware of. Um, and then just make a mental note of kind of your hot spots. And if you don't have, you know, as much time, the next time you work, on this area, you can just go to those hot spots. But my rule for this is to kind of work on this as much as you feel like you need to, um, even daily, if you feel like it, as long as you're not getting sore. So if you are getting sore from this, then I would assume you're being a little too aggressive, your nervous system is reacting, or you're sitting too much onto the ball. You're putting too much weight onto the ball, and that can make you sore the next day. Um, so just, tweak it a little bit, wait till you're not sore, till you try it again, tweak it a little bit so you have less weight, you're less aggressive and see if that stops you from being sore. So as long as you're not sore, you can do this daily if you want to. Um, and the whole idea is to basically do this until you don't feel a whole lot going into this area anymore. So um, you know, you're gonna explore everything you explored the first time as you kind of go in there and figure out, do I still need to be doing this, right? Um, and obviously, there's a difference between your goal being pain relief and your goal being to optimize your body, right? So just keep that in mind as you explore this area. And uh, you can stay on one spot for as long as you're able to breathe through it, be present for what's happening, and not go into fight or flight. And then one last word on uh, emotional releases. Um, of all the areas in the body, I think this has the, the most opportunity for getting the most people to have an emotional release um, unexpectedly. Uh, emotional releases during body work are actually really rare for me. Um, I, I cry um, during other experiences in life, um, but it's not that common for me to actually have them spontaneously without kind of any warning um, during body work. But the, you know, the first time I had it done um, fascia release on my tailbone, had an emotional experience the second time I went in there on my own, had a complete just like burst into tears for no apparent reason. So I just wanna say if this happens to you, that's normal. Um, this can happen anywhere in the body really, but if it happens for you here, I would say just you know maybe come off the ball, let the emotion move through, and if you feel like it, you can keep going. Um, but the whole point of fascia release, really, no matter what part of the body you're on, is to be with what's happening be present to what your body is delivering to you. There's gonna be some message. Um, it could be emotional, it could be physical, it could be a combination. Uh, so that's what I've got for you as far, to, as far as how to take this into the future. If you have any questions for me, because I know this is kind of a complex technique here, um, you can post them below. I'll do my best to answer at least uh, as, you know, when this video comes out initially. And if you have any more follow-up questions for me on this area of the body or um, other kind of injuries related to this area, right? So maybe you never fell, but you might have some kind of SI joint pain or syndrome dysfunction. I hate those labels, but maybe you've been told you have something going on there and you have a question for me. So please post those below and I will keep your questions in mind when filming future videos. So thank you so much for watching this. Please share your stories of success below as well to inspire other people watching this video. And I will see you next time. <music>